What's going on guys, Flint Masters coming back at you with a new video, with a bit of a different type of video today, as I'll be going through the season that was, Survivor 41, and giving my general thoughts on the season. So yeah, I know I said this in a community post, but due to me going out of town this week, that means I won't get a new video out until next Sunday most likely, which would be almost two weeks in between videos. Combine that with the fact that I haven't really given any sort of, given any sort of opinion on this channel on my thoughts on Survivor 41. So I figured I could put up a mini review of I could I could put up a mini review of this season in that uh, during that break and give my general thoughts on the gameplay characters and the overall good and bad of season 41. Um, so fair warning, guys, and you can already probably tell um, I'm making this short on time. So this won't exactly be the most well thought out video. Uh, I'll probably ramble a lot and make some mistakes along the way. And there's gonna be some there's gonna be very little editing. Um, so just be ready for that. Um, but before we start, because I think this video will be pretty long, uh, if you want, like my first, my overall thoughts on this season a day after a day after the finale, is that I think the season was pretty good. You know, if I had to place in my rankings, I guess I mean I really have no idea to tell you the truth. It's been a while since I've uh, kind of thought about my rankings, but I would guess it would be in, like the 17 to 20 range. You know, there were some obviously really bad things about this season, but there were a lot of, like, fun things throughout um, the season as well. Um, So, yeah, let's get right into my thoughts about uh, Survivor 41. So, let's talk about the cast here. You know, a lot of people have said, like, the cast was one of, like, the best cast of all time. Like, it, and it definitely was, even when there was bad episodes. Like, people always praise the cast. Like, how the cast was saved in the season. This cast is so great. You know, so I thought the cast was, it was really, I wouldn't say really good. I thought the cast was pretty good. But, like, and a bit overrated, I guess you could say, because, again, like, people were treating this cast like it was a Kageon cast, when, when I thought it was a pretty good cast, or, you know, David vs. Goliath cast. You know, I don't think it was nearly as good as casts like those, but overall, I think it was pretty, it was good, and I think what makes it, like, so, what makes it, like, I think what makes people, like, think of it as, like, so good is the fact that it's not, like, super top-heavy. You know, some seasons, like, the pre-merge, or, you know, the pre-merge uh, characters are really forgettable. And the post-merge characters are some of the best of all time. Or vice versa. You know, I think what's good about Season 41 is that, like, the cast here, the characters throughout, like, there's all iconic characters in the pre-merge, like, the mid-post-merge, and then the end game. You know, it's spread out throughout. You know, so, you know, let's just go through uh, the cast one by one. Starting with Abraham. You know, probably, like, one of, if not the most forgettable first boot ever. I mean, he was completely, he was overshadowed by Sarah's boot. And, you know, for that matter, all the, everything going on in, on the Uo tribe. And, you know, it was just, it was pretty obvious for him. It was like, I remember what his first confessional was, but like what his second confessional was. Just the usual, keep the tribe strong. And, you know, the, and as usual, when you do that and you're a commanding guy, older guy, you know, you go home. So he really had no story to tell, really brought nothing to the season. Um, Sarah, again, pretty forgettable. Um, especially again, since this episode was basically the JD show, you know, but Sarah was pretty fun for a short stay. She was sweet, nice, seemed likable enough, but I mean, I, she was clearly not ready for the ruthlessness of Survivor. Now, Voce was a complete shock to a lot of people, including me. Like, I think everyone thought he was just going to be a douchebag, for lack of a better word, but no, he was a hard worker, it looked like, you know, he seemed likable enough, and I really think he would have made, you know, maybe not a deep run, but I think he would have had a very memorable run if he stayed a bit longer. You know, I think he's probably one of those players, you know, probably one of the player, uh, what's what's the phrase I'm looking for? Probably a player who did like the least amount wrong. You know, I, I'm what, I made a video about that before. First Boots who did the least amount wrong. Like he's just simply like a player who did the least amount wrong. You know what I mean? Like Tiffany's paranoia and Xander's threatening nature made Boche the Boots. Like, like how did that come to be? You know, like so unlucky. And, you know, again, Ter we'll talk about this later, but terrible gameplay from Evie and uh, Liana. And, you know, while Alexander was obviously a fun character, I actually really was hoping he would go home here over Voce. Because, again, Voce was just super interesting to me in how different he was compared to the preseason. So I was really, really hoping I could see more from Voce. But, yeah, definitely, again, I wouldn't say a good character because, you know, he's only there for a couple episodes, obviously. But definitely, definitely a shock from what we saw. And, you know, who knows, it might have been different, you know, when he actually got in there. Maybe, like, he would have turned into, like, a Russell Hands 2.0, um, at least character-wise, you know, down if he was in more episodes. But for his for short stay, he was definitely like a likable guy, and really just had got taken out for basically basically no reason. And then you have Brad. I mean, I've said this before. Simply an iconic character, one of the best pre-merge characters of all time. I mean, I've already made a couple of vids about him already about just how iconic he was. 
And, but let's just sum it up again. I mean, first thing we see of him, you know, he's he's flat out telling Sarah and Shan they're on the chopping block in season freaking 41. It's just hilarious. And, you know, of course, that led to Live Tribal where his name got thrown around. And, you know, it looked like he was going to be the boot, especially since, like, it was, I wouldn't say spoiled, but everyone thought, like, Sarah uh, was going to be there for a while. And, you know, obviously JD wasn't going to go home after the episode he had. So that was just hilarious. And um, then, of course, in episode two, he created the spy shack. And then in episode three, it was essentially the Brad show as he found those two advantages, went to that island. Uh, he, he screwed up the broccoli line. And then obviously, and then he ultimately got voted out. You know, Brad was just awesome. And then same thing to um, another iconic pretty much character in JD. I mean, I, I love JD. I know a lot of people, I wouldn't even say people didn't like him. I just think maybe we're a little annoyed by him, by his like terrible gameplay. Because he wasn't the best character, but man. He gave some great confessionals. You know, he was a, just simply a spark plug out there. Like, every time you saw him, like, I was... Every time I personally saw him, like, I was engaged to my TV screen. And like I said, of course, he was very sloppy, but that's what made him entertaining, you know? So, obviously, he wasn't great, but, you know, that's that's not... That's two back-to-back all-time great premier characters, which is, you know, awesome, considering, like, sometimes it's hard to get one all-time great. Or not even all-time great, just great, you know? And that's two back-to-back. So... That's a really, really, and obviously, you know, because it, they were on the Ua tribe, you know, of course, I mean, obviously, I guess you, they kind of have to tell a story, you know, because they're always going to tribal, but still, that's really, really good for season 41 to have such, you know, great characters r- right off the bat. Jeannie, you know, to be honest, I didn't really get much out of her. I know a lot of people like her simply because she was super relatable. You know, she's not one of these Voce or Sean-like people who are obviously incredibly successful in life, you know. She's just a middle-aged grocery clerk living her dream, you know, and a lot of people relate to that. But for me personally, she didn't really add much to the season. Um, I was kind of expecting her to play like, you know, wildly like JD, you know, kind of her like, you know, feeling on the outside because she is like so different and like probably doesn't feel, you know, probably doesn't feel like she fits in. But, you know, she was just kind of there for me and pretty forgettable in my opinion. Um, And then you have Sydney, you know, we're on to the merge now, even though she's, I guess you could, I guess you consider her a pre-merge boot. I guess, or I guess a pre-jury boot. Yeah, that's she's a merge boot, but a pre-jury boot. One of those interesting 12th place finishes. Um, but um, unlike Voce, you know, Sydney was exactly like how I, how I expected her to be. Basically a Natalia 2.0, very vocal and very, very confident in herself. You know, another great character. Now on to the jury phase and start with Tiffany. And then my, oh my, what a surprise she was. You know, I expected her to be just this normal 47-year-old woman that was just, you know, kind of like Jeannie would be, just kind of, kind humble and just living her dream and having fun but my oh my was she an absolute firecracker i mean completely unexpected from the preseason um and you know i think she basically had the most control on yase because again she survived the abraham vote and you know i've talked about this before but you know she got evie and liana to make a flat out bad decision to keep xander over voce which was what she wanted you know everything was telling the two to get rid of Xander and obviously that was the right move but Tiffany won Voce and she got Voce so you know despite her big time personality she was also a good player I feel um but even more so than that you know and this isn't like character wise but since a lot of spoilers said that she won this season and she was in such a great position edgic wise in general but she goes out at the final 11 so that was also very interesting considering Considering the way they were building Tiffany up, for her to like go home in like eleventh place, you know, kind of a random position. That's not usually a position you think would get a massive edit, good edit in that matter. You know, that was surprising. So you know, that also is going to make her pretty memorable, at least in the edge community. You know, and for me personally, I never thought she was winning the season, but still, again, to go this home for her to go home that early was really surprising. And, you know, in general, her, her entire run was pretty surprising in the best of ways. So, yeah, I absolutely love Tiffany. And then Nasir, I mean, how can, how can you not love Nasir, you know? And here's the thing about Nasir. He was pretty invisible, like, throughout the season. Um, he only had, like, 14 confessionals. But it's just like, like every time he appeared on screen, he either made you smile or, like, provided, like, some of the best moments of the season. You know, of course, winning Luva, winning Luva the challenge when they were trying to throw it. And, of course, the uh, iconic um, I'm as confused as a goat on AstroTurf line. You know, simply awesome. Love Nasir. How can you not love Nasir? Uh, now on to Evie. And, again, similar to Jenny, uh, Jeannie, excuse me. I didn't. She didn't really add much to this season for me. Um, even though, she, again, she's, she's one of those people you just want to naturally root for. Her. And, you know, she was a big-time player in the first couple episodes. But after that, she really fell off the map. 
and really didn't add that much excitement to the season after that. Um, she seemed like a good enough player, just couldn't really escape the Yasi minority at the merge, and didn't get Xander to play the advantage on her. You know, again, like I said, pretty ironic, considering she could have easily blown him out. And, um, you know, went home pretty forgettably. So, yeah, to me, Evie was just okay of a character. But, you know, then, you, of course, you have Shan. And, you know, say what you will about her. And we'll get talk more about her, you know, later. Um, but, my goodness, what a character she was. And, and for that matter, a very important character, I feel like. She'll go down as a very important character in Survivor history. Um, you know, I saw a good point about it from some, I, some from someone on Twitter. Or maybe even Instagram. Or not Instagram, uh, Reddit. I don't know. Um, or it might have been like on I might have saw it on Reddit and like it was a shared uh, Twitter post. But anyway, um, that like if you you know you know how people always say you know what um in the bio is like what player are you gonna play like and all female players like say poverty you know now now like and I, I agree with this a lot of people are gonna say they're they're gonna play like Shan instead of poverty you know they want to be this commanding figure that will use scare tactics to get to get what she wants. You know, as as Shane was one of the first female players in a long time to play like this, and really the first female of color to play like this, you know. So, and it's obviously with the new 50-50 rules, or at least 50%, you know, player of color rules, or my note, whatever that rule is for CBS, you know. There's probably going to be a lot of uh, females who look up to her and say, yeah, I want to play like that, you know. So, say what you want about her, if she's rootable, unrootable, you know, she hasn't exactly been that great off the show. But what a big time player she was this season. Obviously, an all time great character. Um, then you follow that up with Liana. She was just okay to me. Um, if, if anything, probably like probably the most forgettable person this season. At least I made a big time run. Um, well, I mean, she did have that one side view with Xander, um, but it didn't really add anything to the season, and she didn't really play that well at all. I think her age really showed here. And yeah, I mean, she just kind of hung on to the Black Alliance, Shan, you know, and to me was just a pretty forgettable player this season. And then Danny, you know, similar to Nasir, um, while in terms of like screen time, you know, he was off and on. You cannot help but love the guy. You know, he was this, he was basically this gentle giant and probably one of, if not the best, if not the most likable sports figure in Survivor history. Love Danny. Uh, you know, just, yeah, not really much to say about him strategy-wise, gameplay-wise, character-wise, but just gotta love the guy. Now for Ricard, again, another person who was exactly, was who was exactly how I thought he was going to be. Um, when I first saw his picture when the cast was first leaked, I thought he was going to be this, he was casted to be this bubbly person, over-the-top personality. You know, I heard he was like a big TikToker or whatnot, you know, so... But but when the preseason came around, he was doing the they were doing the videos. He seemed very calm and collective. You know, I was sure he was going to be pretty ruthless, um, and he had a chance to be a physical threat, but not like too threatening. So all of that combined did make him my winner pick. Um, and he made that he was a lot of people's winner picks. I saw. I think he was like number one for most people. Um, so now while he was a great player, ultimately did win, obviously, but obviously was a great player, probably like maybe even contention to be the best overall player of the season. You know, TV-wise, he didn't bring much to me. I mean, he and Shan were, you know, are one of the more noteworthy Survivor duos duos in, in recent Survivor history. Um, him pulling off the Shan blind side in general was the moment of the season, in my opinion. And so all that was good. But, you know, TV-wise, other than that, you know, he, he while he was a big part of the season, I wasn't, like, the biggest fan of him, of him overall. Um, So for Heather... Um, who is Heather? <laughs> like, I still, don't, I still don't know what she did to earn this bad of an edit. Cause I hear, I hear she was entertaining, but apparently the problem was she was pretty foul mouthed the entire time out there and would have come across in a really bad way if they showed more of her, if they showed more of her personality. And there was like no way they could get around that because again, she was like literally just so foul mouthed out there, always cursing and swearing. There was like no way they could edit her to be this sweet person. And you know, and I, that it's been speculated you know, as a theory, that's why Erica was so purple for being a winner. As if they showcase more of her and Heather, fans would have, you know, apparently been against Erica simply due to her association with Heather. So now again, do I believe all that? Not really, but it, who knows? There has to be some merit to something because it really, it really is insane how this pretty important character to the story of the season, who also sounded like an interesting character, could be this invisible. Now for Xander, and I'll be honest with you guys, we're on to the final three now, obviously. Um, yeah, in case you haven't been able to tell, I've been going like through order in which they placed. But yeah, as for, as far as Xander goes, I didn't get I didn't really get much from Xander. I know he was this big underdog and the golden boy type, 
that, you know, again, makes him naturally a guy to root for. But to me, he was just kind of there. I mean, he obviously had the iconic, no, but you can have this fake, this fake one phrase. Um, and was able to make it to the final three when it looked almost impossible for him to even make it to the merge. So all that I do respect, but as a character and player, again, he was just there for me. I mean, People were people were praising him for holding on to his idol game, but I was sitting there agreeing with everyone saying what the jury was thinking. Like, why take out Xander? The kid isn't doing anything. He had a chance multiple times to make a big move and didn't do it. And to be honest, played a pretty goat like maybe not goat like game, but a pretty safe game. You know, when he had a chance to be more explosive. Um, and yeah, I gotta say I'm not really surprised. Well, no, I'm really surprised actually to see that. Um, well, no, I'm not surprised to see that everyone was rooting for him to win, but I was surprised that everyone thought he was going to win. And, you know, very surprised that everyone's like, oh, he got robbed, Xander got robbed. You know, how did Erica win? I mean, obviously that's the edit, but even still on the edit, you know, from what we saw from him, I mean, the guy made like one good strategic move all season, which almost didn't even work out, you know, had Sydney not played her shot in the dark, you know, Evie would have gone home after all of that, you know, and this showed Tiffany and Evie that they could no longer trust Xander. And so, all that, no, all that's not really that great. So while Xander was a fun underdog, you know, he was a little overrated to me, both character and player-wise. Um, now the runner-up to Sean, I mean, he definitely was a big character this season. Unfortunately, I think a lot of his content was either negative or, you know, was tied into the Black Alliance. So we didn't really get to see much into his personality or personal content. Um, so, but I, what I will say, I will say this. I think he probably would have got my vote out of the final three. I mean, yeah, his social game wasn't really that great, but I mean, it was obviously good enough to get, you know, to get Lu enough of the Luvu people to throw the challenge to get rid of the eventual winner in, in Erica. And don't forget, Erica was saved by the hourglass twist. And like I already touched on with Xander, I don't think he really did much. So yeah, I think Deshaun would have gotten my vote. And you know, I and for me personally as well, you know, maybe it's bias showing, but I, I really like Deshaun a lot more than most people. Him and Danny were kind of that cool bromance I always enjoy. Obviously, him almost going home over the do or die twist made me want to, made me want to root for him. And you know, he was willing to make big moves like throw the challenge, throwing challenges to get rid of people, turn on the Black Alliance, um, truth bomb people in desperation. You know, so all that was really fun from him. So yeah, I really like Deshaun. I can understand why people wouldn't like him. But I think he was pretty fun overall. And again, I think played the best out of the final three. And then lastly, the winner, Erica. I mean, what can you say? <laughs> One of the worst edited winners of all time. If not the worst. Because at least people like Natalie White and Sophie Clark had their alliances established early. We knew literally nothing about Erica's gameplay up, in, up until like episode 8. And she was as invisible as Heather in the pre-merge. It's just insane how they would edit their first female, their first female winner in five in five years like this after hyping up a well five years and what seven seasons um after hyping up a female winner for such a long time so while i can't say much about her character as a player you know she was obviously massively she was massively saved by nasir you know winning the challenge for luvu and the hourglass twist um but she was still a good player obviously made a lot of great social bonds always voted correctly and apparently she made the majority alliance in the post merge that wasn't uh fully shown on screen and you know she worked with was able to work with Lubu's in the post merge even after they wanted her out so she played a good game and while I would have voted for Deshaun she definitely deserved the win even if she's one of the oddest edited winners ever so that's kind of my overall opinions on the cast again overall pr a really good cast uh, just for me like some players who I think are a bit overrated by the community um, but still overall fun cast really added a lot to the season and so, yeah, uh, let's talk about the gameplay now. Um, and, you know, with all the twists, you would think the season would be a crazy, would be crazy gameplay wise. Or I guess like when you first think of the season, you thought of it as crazy since, you know, there was so much twist here and there. You know, you're kind of blind. You're kind of blinded by the fact that, you know, when you really take a step back, it, the strategy and actual gameplay this season wasn't anything too crazy. So, yeah, let's um, go through each episode and talk about the moments and vote out. Um, and like I said, Abe's boot was boring and obvious. Um, you know, Sarah's boot was pretty fun with all the names on the chopping block and the and the live tribal. But ultimately, just kind of a ended. Uh, these votes ended in a whimper. Um, but it, you know, that was obviously the first episode. It was fun to see Survivor back, the tribe dynamics, the the prisoners dilemma. So overall, pretty fun episode. Voce's boot was a great episode with again with all the scenarios. But then you have 
three episodes in a row after that, where it's basically just Ricard and Shan making the decision on who from Uo goes home. So while the trials aren't that interesting, the episodes themselves are pretty interesting. Um, well, the third episode, um, while Brad was hilarious that ep- while Brad was hilarious that episode, everything else was awful. As that episode was literally nothing but advantages, like no strategy talk whatsoever. It was literally just advantages, and we did luck out in Brad being the main focus of these advantages. But st- it was still awful nonetheless. Um, but after that, we did get two really fun episodes. Of course, in episode four, we got everything with Luvu wanting to throw the challenge on Erica of all people, you know, who at the time, like I said, was invisible and it made no sense. But, you know, Nasir came to the rescue and, and they were unable to throw it. And my oh my, how important that ended up being. Um, and we also got to hear like from from Danny and Deshaun during the challenge, like in, in confessionals. I thought that was really cool. Something I wish they did more of. Um, and, you know, to finish it off, we got JD's money shot fail and ultimately being the one to go home, giving Shan his advantage. Just awesome stuff there. And while episode five was kind of in the middle, just kind of forgettable, it was fun to see, you know, it come down to a tribe of two of Ricard and Shan. First time we got a tribe of two, a tribe of two since Philippines. And in general, was was fitting considering how big of players uh, the two were this season. Then episode six... All-time bad episode. I mean, no tribal council. The stupid uh, hourglass ending, just ridiculous. And, you know, while it was followed by the exciting merge vote off, you know, with uh, Xander's bluff on Liana, I still, again, found the move a little overrated, a little overhyped. And, you know, I was still pissed. And, you know, it doesn't change the fact that we still lost Sydney because, you know, that happens a lot, you know. Oh, there was an unfair twist, but we got an exciting finish out of that. You know, no, to me, it's still, while it's still exciting, I can't overlook the fact that, you know, Sydney or whoever went home here got completely screwed. You know, we'll talk more about this when the twists come, but she got completely screwed when she literally won immunity. She was a part of the team that won immunity. Just really stupid. But, you know, I mean, Xander's bluff was fun, but other than that, two really bad episodes here. Um, episode 8 was okay. It was disappointing to see Yasa um, be targets and was fairly, you know, after, you know, after the fun bluff they all three had and all survived somehow that tribal, it was disappointing to see them turn on each other. And it was pretty obvious one of them was going home despite the Heather and Nasir talk. Um, But again, it was super surprising that Tiffany was the one to go here. Um, So that definitely broke Edric for the day and was something of note. Um, Episode nine was a lot more fun. It was a lot more fun than it should have been because it looked like the obvious Evie and Heather boots. Um, but there was some intrigue in the Evie boot as it looked like Xander might play his idol on her. But even more so that a lot of people brought up after the fact, he could have used his extra vote here and again on the revote. And, you know, I can't imagine Danny and Deshaun going to rocks in that scenario. So, you know, that could have got Liana to go home. But it, that tribal date ended a whimper with Evie the one to go home there. But then on the other side, though, the exact opposite happened. As I was really surprised to see Ricard and Shan pull off such a great move and splitting the votes on Nasir and Heather and sending Nasir home with an idol in his pocket when I thought for sure it was going to be a ridiculously boring Heather boot. Um, and then, of course, episode 10, an all-time great episode. Between the Black Alliance debating on if they should play for themselves or the Black community, Shan finally turning on Ricard, only for Ricard to win immunity, and he flipped the game all around on Shan. And Shan did end up going home, as you know, Ricard, as um, Deshaun and Danny did make the decision to flip in their best interest. Voting her out with an eye in her pocket, you know, even splitting the vote so much. I mean, everyone was on board. Just fantastic all the way around. Again, an all-time great episode. Episode 11 was obviously really was the obviously really dumb do or die twist, and even despite the best scenario happening for the Black Alliance, they still didn't get anyone to flip, and Liana went home. And episode 10 was beyond boring, as it was obviously going to be Danny and Deshaun on the chopping block the entire time, and they they didn't find an idol, they didn't win immunity, and to be honest, I personally thought it was pretty obviously going to be Danny there. Um, and then the finale was also pretty anticlimactic as they didn't even try to hide, um, the, the, uh, Ricard boot. And then in the fire making, instead of the Erica and Deshaun matchup, we had been building up to all season or, you know, even last minute it looked like Xander might give up his immunity to face Erica. We get to Sean and Heather and, you know, while it was exciting, it's like, it didn't really matter at that point. Erica won the game. You know, again, they weren't even hiding the jury's reactions to Xander's decision. So yeah, a pretty lackluster finish in my opinion. So let's talk about the big problem with the season. And that was the horrendously bad twist this season. Like some all-time bad twist here. Um, you know, the shot in the dark was basically useless. And just an unnecessary, uh, an unnecessary thing to worry about. Not only for the players, but for the viewers at home. 
Um, and it just overall was pretty stupid, and, and I hope it doesn't come back. The idol activation, the idol activation, um, which while it led to the great Nasir moment, it was obviously incredibly unfair that finding an idol means you lose your vote, and you have to rely on others finding it. You know, finding the uh, the other camp's idol. And it's obvious to everyone in the game that these phrases mean something. And, you know, these players aren't stupid. And everyone caught on pretty quickly that the people who were saying these phrases had idols. You know, just stupid and really unfair. And those aren't even the worst twists. You then have the two ridiculous twists that not only really harmed the season, but was just an overall bad look for the show. And the Hourglass twist and the Do or Die twist. You know, Do or Die obviously wasn't as bad, you know, because thank goodness Deshaun, you know, didn't go home because of it. But, you know, to me, it encourages people not to play an immunity challenge. I mean, I couldn't believe that five of the seven played. And a guy like Deshaun all of a sudden had a two and three shot of going home. And, yes, I don't care what anyone says about the mining Q problem, the Monte Q problem or whatever. Like, oh, you got to switch it now. And now all of a sudden it's a two and three shot. So it's kind of fair in that regret in that sense. You just got to play the odds. Like, no, I don't give a crap what the logistics say, okay? At the end of the day... Going into that, only one of the three boxes made him safe, okay? I don't care, you know, you got to play. Switching this makes it like two of three, or you got to play right. Like, no, he, he going in, Deshaun had a one and three shot of being safe, and a two and three shot of going home, simply by losing immunity challenge. It's it just so beyond ridiculous and stupid to me. And then the hourglass twist. I mean, come on. I just, I just can't imagine how anyone would ever like this twist. And it got, and fun fact, it got Danny, well, not a fun fact, but it got Danny to basically say he doesn't want to come back to Survivor because, you know, being an athlete, it really messed with his head that his entire life he was told to compete and give it your best. And with no control of his own, it gets taken away from him. You know, him winning uh, all of a sudden was a bad thing, you know, just really messed with his head you know, and probably messed with everyone's head. I mean, it just really mean and messed up. Um, and it's obvious what Erica would do and pretty much like... Um, <sighs> Pretty much, I think, what any player would do in that situation would smash the hourglass, even if they felt, like, really safe. It's the freaking merge vote. You know, you you never know what's going to happen. Um, so, of course, you would smash the hourglass. And I don't think anyone would ever get mad at anyone for smashing it. And, again, I don't care that led to the great moment of Xander's fake idol bluff on Liana. It doesn't make up for how bad and, for that matter, how messed up this twist is. And I've seen people say this, and I agree. Like, are people no longer going to play for immunities anymore and give it their all? Like, are people are not going to... This is kind of what happened in Big Brother. With all these stupid twists that are completely ridiculous, are people going to play more safe now? Because you literally can't even bake on winning immunity now. You know, it, it's just so stupid. Really, I know I keep saying this, but really messed up and mean. And it's it just... A, it, it's just it, What I'm saying is, it's just a terrible look for the show, you know? So, I, I have no idea what the producers were thinking here. How in the world they thought like this was ever going to go over well. Um, maybe that was their plan to be so stupid that it would get people talking. But I absolutely pray this twist never returns. So now just some other general thoughts I have on the season. Um, I absolutely love the edit of the season. Other than Erica. You know, I absolutely loved, you know, Tip being shocked after Tiffany's boot, after Shan's boot, and going into going into the finale with basically no clue as to who's going to win. I mean, you know, I've said this before, that's why I think South Africa is the best of ever franchise, because you're constantly guessing throughout the season on who the winner is going to be. And most of the time, the winners are extremely unpredictable, whereas in most Survivor seasons, you know, you know who the winner is by the merge and definitely know who it's going to be, like, heading into the, like, the final couple episodes. Or even at the merge, say, there's, like, it's going to, it's definitely between, like, two or three people, and one of those two or three people always win. You know, Erica was like literally at the bottom with Heather for a lot of people in terms of winning chances heading into heading into the merge. Um, but so while I love the unpredictable the unpredictable edit, and I hope they do this in the future, there simply had to be more shown when it comes to Erica in the pre-merge. It's just that simple. You know, even if if it was just like a simple um showing her and Heather's um friendship and alliance and how much she trusts Heather and like one strategy confession of like what her gameplay was like that would be enough like that wouldn't make her not that wouldn't like make her oh she's obviously gonna win now like no but we had to see something from her you know because we we didn't know anything about her and like some of the pe people are so scared of her they're scared of her like in the pre-merge post-merge like non-stop you know it just made no sense you know especially for the first female winner since Sarah to have an edit like this it, it just there just need to be something more in the pre-merge because post-merge it was great she had a consistent edit there just had to be something more in the pre-merge like she, again she was she was literally as invisible as header so 
did not like that, but I did love the edit of the season. I'll touch on the wokeness real quick. I know it drew a lot of people away from this season. I personally didn't have a problem with any of it. I think the only thing for me when it comes to the to the quote wokeness is I hope they don't cut people in future seasons who could potentially be who could potentially be fun players and characters just to cast people with sob stories. You know, for example, like Voce. Um, I know he went out early, but he was definitely an interesting character to me and a lot of people. And I just hope people like him don't get cut in future seasons in favor of, you know, a player of color who doesn't ma- who doesn't add much of anything to the season. But that player is a minority and has a sob story. And, and you know, because of that, they get casted over a guy like Voce, who's a white man with a very extremely with who who's lived a very successful life and again i don't have a problem with these people being i don't have a problem with these sob stories again i think it adds a lot to the season like i said shan's episode was amazing because of the background we had on you know the dilemma these black people these black players were facing you know especially after the, the year that was 2020 but again i just hope it doesn't become you know cast not I, I want Survivor to continue casting people, no matter what they look like, no matter what their background is. The w- number one reason they should be cast is because they make for great TV. And I just hope, you know, we don't miss out on great characters to cast more not so fun characters. But since they've had, you know, since they're, they're a minority and, you know, they've gone it through hardships, they get casted for that reason, you know. Cast them for sure if they're a great character, but don't just intentionally cast them, especially in order to cut other great characters, you know. Um, so that's the only thing I'll, I'll say about the wokeness, you know, don't have a problem with anything else. In fact, the wokeness in some cases added to the season for me, but that would be my only concern. So there you go, guys. Those are my overall thoughts on Survivor 41, a pretty fun season overall. You know, gameplay was average with horrendous twists, but we also got a very fun and likable cast and arguably the most unpredictable edit and winner in Survivor history. So yeah, honestly, but honestly, now that I talked about it more, I think this season probably would be more around the 2021 range. Um, but you know, I'll say that for when the time comes. Um, so yeah, there you go, guys. A little fun video of my general thoughts of the season. Let me know your thoughts of the season below. Um, things you agree, you agree with me on, things you don't agree with me on, or any other questions you have for me about Survivor 41 that I might not have touched on in this video, or you just want more clarification on. Um, so with that said, thank you guys for watching. If you like what you see, then smash that like and subscribe button and uh, help me try to get to 2,000 subs by the end of the year. That would be a nice goal to reach. And let me know if you guys would like to see more general videos like this when Survivor 42 rolls around. You know, maybe not like, you know, as badly as unprepared as this one and badly presented. You know, maybe I'll clean up a little bit, but still just kind of give my general thoughts. Just a quick video every week of, you know, my thoughts on the episode. Again, I try to say that for other channels, you know, all other Survivor channels do that. So I like to kind of put all my focus on my own videos. But if you guys really like this, you know, then totally let me know in the comments. And so, yeah, once again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.